Hey guys, it's your girl Marquilla. And today, well, officially, it has been one year since I've had weight loss surgery. I had gastric sleep surgery last year in October. I am 102 pounds down from my highest weight. And um, yes, I wanted to share with you the journey within this one year and what I've learned. So let's get right into it. So welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Marquilla. I am a certified health and wellness coach. I am a mindfulness practitioner. I am a self-care mentor, and I am also a mom and a wife. And I had gastric sleeve surgery back in October of 2021. It is officially one year. My page is committed to just about everything that I do. And that is um, continual to, can, <laughs> continuing to talk about health and wellness as it relates to our everyday life because I think it is very important that we take control of our wellness and that's just not physical wellness but mental and emotional um, as well as spiritual. Um, and I also talk about or I will be providing tips on how to prioritize self-care and what that looks like and coming real soon I will be adding guided meditations on this page. Um, I just want to say this. I psych myself out. I am dealing with imposter syndrome. I have been working really hard over these last few months and or more than a few months. Um, and here I am positioned to be able to move forward, forward with um, all of the work that I've been putting in. And I procrastinate, <laughs> if you will because I'm very nervous, I'm very scared, and sometimes I just feel like I'm not capable, and that's just me being honest and transparent. But that's not what this video is about. This video is just to talk about my one-year journey after having weight loss surgery, and so I'm just gonna share a few things with that. So let's get right on into it. So number one, um, I struggle with body dysmorphia. Yes, um, I feel like the more weight that I lose, the worse that it gets. Um, and that's okay. And the reason why I say that is okay is because it's just natural for us to be able to struggle within our bodies, especially when we're experiencing change. Um, sometimes it's very hard for me to see the woman that I am today because I am seeing the woman that I was before. And I have to constantly get in front of the mirror. Um, and I look at pictures, old pictures, new pictures, um, to sort of remind myself of how far I come because sometimes you can get so caught up into it, your body. Um, so for instance, um, sometimes I compare myself to other people's journey and I say like, I didn't lose enough weight. Or I might look at my stomach and say, oh my God, it's still very huge. Um, you know, get caught up on those rows. It, I, I'm just being very specific, but you know, looking at those old pictures, and videos or what have you and looking at myself today reminds me of how far I've come. I'm also working on practicing gratitude. I'm very grateful for what weight loss surgery has done for me. I am very grateful for this journey of improving my wellness um, and what that has done for me because it has done so much for me. Um, and I have to remind myself of those and to continue to practice gratitude and it's a work in progress. But I tell myself that I am so grateful for all of the work that I put in to get here and I'm grateful for who I am and I am grateful for who I once was because that person is much is loved just as much as who I the person that I am today um and so I don't hate who I was before um but I'm very appreciated appreciative of who I was before because I went through an experience that sort of molded me into the person that I am today. Um, and the other part, the part, other part of that is to be kind to myself. Um, that that has gotten a lot better. Some days it's still a challenge, but um, 
I have to be kind with myself because this is a journey that where I'm going to always learn something. Um, I don't, I tell myself there aren't any failures. There's just hiccups and mistakes, but there are opportunities to learn, to grow and to heal. And so that's how I view each part of that. So the other part is just making sure that I am sticking to the plan with eating and everything. I'm going to adjust my camera. Um, so since I'm at my one year, I find myself having more cravings for sweets. Um, and I really don't like sugar free. Like I figure like if I, if, if it has to be sugar free, I don't want it. Um, eating sugars don't really irritate me. Although within these last few weeks, I can't tolerate certain foods <laughs> as you know what? And I, I just take it as a win, honestly, because I'm like, it's just a reminder that I need to watch what I'm eating and to, you know, continue to manage but I don't deprive myself but I have had I have had an increased craving into sweets and so um I've kind of beaten myself up back about that because I've given into those cravings but um I'm hopping back on board and see there's that part where it's like being kind to myself but that's just be me and being and transparent um I'm being transparent about that because I want to say this um without rambling because I do that um, you're going to have those moments where you're going to crave. Those cravings are not going to go anywhere. Um, for some people, they'll say like, you know, I don't crave sweets, but a lot of people, you know, do talk about it. And I do see when people say that they feel really guilty. They, they attach shame to that and they're being unkind to their sales for having those cravings. You are a human being. <laughs> you are a human being. Um, and it's natural it's for you to have these cravings. You might want to eat more and that's fine too. I think it's very important to respect your restriction and manage yourself, um, manage what you're eating, but don't deprive yourself. Eat in moderation. Um, there are all there are so many alternatives to sort of soothe that craving or satis uh, satisfy that craving, if you will. But um, yeah, I'm choosing to be kind to myself and to understand that I'm human and that these cravings that I have is natural. And just because I had weight loss surgery doesn't mean that they're just going to go away, that I still have to deal with them and figure out ways to manage in a healthy way. And so I keep that in my mind while having these cravings. And there's a lot of times where I'm like, you know, I have these cravings. I'll just drink crystal light in my water or I'll just drink more water or I might just, you know, go for a fruit instead of um you know a cookie or a piece of candy or if i do eat those things i only eat a small portion um and not overindulge um another thing that i'm trying is like you know if i want to have dessert because of the calories maybe factor in those calories and maybe replace something where i'm not eating too many calories if you will but all in all i'm human and that is one of my challenges Another thing is exercising. I beat myself up about this because I don't exercise every day. And in fact, the last week, I've just, just craziness. Um, I haven't really exercised much. I do walk. Um, I try to get some movement in. And I also do yoga. Um, well, I guess that is exercise. Okay. But I, I, I just don't do it as much. And um, when I'm dealing with my body dysmorphia, I always go back to that. That's because you need to do this. And so... Um, that is one of the things that I struggle with is exercising consistently, consistently. Um, but again, it's one of those things that I'm not going to beat myself up about. Um, I did, and I'm learning to not do that and to be more kind and compassionate to myself and to be patient with myself. My body is not ready, um, but I can implement these small steps and then work my way up to, because sometimes, you know, Recovering from perfectionism. That's the other thing. I always feel like it has to be a certain way or look a certain way. And I'm realizing that it doesn't have to be that way and it doesn't have to look that way. I'll be kind to myself and do what I can. <sighs> Drinking water. Oh my God. I keep water by me at all times, but actually putting the brim to my lips and sipping is very hard and if you've had weight loss surgery you probably can relate one you have to sip and i'm used to gulping and honestly sometimes i gulp and then i regret it later sometimes i'm okay 
um but sipping all day is pretty much my life and um if i'm busy or doing things sometimes that can escape me and i'm not thinking about it um but i'll get really thirsty by the end of the night and then it's like i'm trying to squeeze in water because now i'm sitting down and not doing anything um so yeah water is a bit of a challenge i probably drink about 50 to 60 ounces a day um if that because sometimes it's not perfect but i try to count the bottles i drink you know the 16.9 ounces of bottles of water and i do have like this this insulated cup that i use which is about 20 ounces so i try to count in my head i do have a water tracker before anyone says anything and trust me i use it but it doesn't always work because like i said i'm moving and shifting and moving and sometimes it's not easy to keep track but drinking water is very difficult for me this late in the game, I guess, this one year. Um, and yeah, so if you're struggling with it, there's, you know, count the bottles. What are, that's, that's something that's easy for me, count the bottles. So if I drunk, you know, three or four of those 17 ounce bottles, I know I've drunk 51 ounces of water. So that's how I try to keep track in my mind and I always try to keep water on me and sip, sip as much as I can. So it's all, it's just like trying to train my thoughts to get, get in the water and focus on that. So I struggle with drinking water. <laughs> One of the things that I've learned is just kind of respect respecting my restriction. Um, I always wonder because... Um, if you've like me, I've been in the groups. I was joined uh, my friend. She had the weight loss surgery. She added me to the groups. And I always would see the complaints as like, you know, oh, I gained the weight back. It doesn't work. Or, oh, I just have to eat, 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 and I can't control it. And I'm not saying, I'm not shaming those people, you know, for having the, I'm not shaming those people for having their complaints or what have you. That's their experience. I'm not here to minimize it or invalidate it. But what I'm saying it is can be very discouraging when you're new. And so a lot of times I will look at that like, oh my God, I'm going through this process and I'm just gonna gain the weight back. Like it's not working. Um, or, you know, it's just so many different complaints. I'm not gonna go into all of them. But what I've learned is like, I can see how it is very easy to overeat. Like you can trick yourself and I, cause I've done it. I'm gonna be honest, I've done it. Like I'll eat something and then I'll wait 15 minutes because like I'll be full and I'll wait 15 minutes and then I'll try to squeeze something else in because I don't feel this full. And so I caught myself doing that and I immediately had to like put it in my awareness like no, being mindful of how I'm eating and I'm like no because this can lead to overeating and now I'm falling back into old habits and that is what I've did all of this work for is to not fall back into old habits. And so now I'm full, you know, I eat like maybe less than a cup of food. I'm full. That's it. I cannot force myself to eat or I'll literally say, I don't need that. So respecting my tool. Um, so I don't feel sick. So I'm not irritated or things like that. I'm eliminating foods that might cause heartburn. Um, and just taking my time. The other issue is I eat fast. And so now I'm trying to be mindful of that to slow down because that causes gas. And I and I deal with that a lot because I eat fast. So just being mindful of what I'm eating is really helping me to respect my restriction and to respect my tool. Having this transformation happen within my body, I think the biggest one is feeling like I am enough, um, that I that this is for me and that I am meant to be who I am today. I think that's really hard because um, I struggle with that sometimes because like I said, just like with body dysmorphia, you still see the old person and I see everything about that old person. And I think sometimes that I, that's who I am. And so having these opportunities, becoming a certified health and wellness coach, having a platform where I'm trying to educate people about their wellness and encourage them, and motivate them and inspire them. And also teaching people how to prioritize self-care as well as allowing yourself to have this sacred space where you can meditate. Um, I often feel like that 
I'm not capable of doing that. That that isn't meant for me. That this is something that I'm not good at. And it's that imposter syndrome. And also tying that back into weight loss surgery, I feel that way. Like I am not deserving of this, that I'm just gonna ruin it or I'm gonna mess it up. Man, it is um, tough at times. And I bring those thoughts into my time of meditation and I reflect on it because I want to give whole space for these thoughts and to also teach myself how to release them and let them go because they're not real. They're not true. And that's another thing that I ask myself, how do I know if that's true? Thoughts are thoughts. They're not our reality. I don't have to accept that. And that is something that I'm training myself on um, to help me sort of get through and manage that these thoughts are not real. And so although I'm dealing with imposter syndrome, I am also working to retrain my thoughts and to challenge my self-limiting beliefs with positive affirmations and positive thoughts and holding on to what is true about me. And what is true about me is that everything that I've gone through has prepared me for this next journey of my life. And I am well capable of helping others do the same. So that's it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'm pretty much wanting, I want to open myself up more to being a support to other people who are, are thinking about having weight loss surgery, who have had weight loss surgery, um, and are just struggling within those beginning stages. Um, I think I'm going to do another video just talking about some of the common questions that I get, um, not on YouTube, but on other platforms. Um, and be sure to follow me on Facebook as well as Instagram under at my, I'm sorry, at the whole U L W C. And you can also find that on my bio page. Um, but yeah, follow me there. Um, I share more of my wellness tips and self-care tips and things like that. But yeah, I think that in this next part of my journey, I will continue to talk about my journey, but I also want to be able to um, provide support to those of you um, who are thinking about having weight loss surgery, who've had it. I even had people reach out to me who've been, who've had surgery years ago, and they often tell me like, oh my God, you're really inspiring me or encouraging me. And I think that's just huge because I'm like, me? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm here to support you. So if you have any questions, if there's something you just want me to talk more on, share my experience, I'm sure I, there's something that I can relate to. Please go ahead and feel free to reach out to me with your questions. You can email me. You can reach out to me on any of my platforms by DMing me. And I will go ahead and make a video. But I want to thank you guys for tuning in and just hearing about my journey. 102 pounds. Yay. <laughs> and more to go hopefully and this journey has definitely been a blessing to me and i want to be able to pass that on to others but thank you so much for joining me and until next time guys you all stay blessed